the structural the structural design means that uh, the designer has a structural idea of the whole design. It doesn't like a, a data pass compiler that you have a only arithmetic, you only have an equation. You have a, no idea on the structure and you want the high level sensor to do all the structure for you. But in this case, I want to do a design. I clearly know the design structure. And then how do we uh, write the C language to describe this structure design? Now, and in Velo code, definitely when you design using Velo code, you have a clear idea on the structure. So you, you use the RTL code to uh, explicitly specify structure. And using C language you, to describe structure design, very difficult. Yeah. And you have to strictly follow certain guidelines. So in here, I will illustrate that. So why I want to introduce the structure design here is uh, for a whole system and avoid the that uh, you will have a HS code and the RTL code. Okay. However, I, we really want that uh, the whole design is written in HS in C so that you can simulate the whole design in C. That's much faster. Instead of using the part of a code is the C code, part of a code is the RTL. In that case, you have to do the code simulation. Yeah. And that will be very slow. Okay, so I have uh, four topics to introduce here. Okay, first I, I give a very uh, primitive idea on the structure design. That's a typical structure design, uh, a, a state machine. And you have a combination of logic and you have a memory device to constitute a, a that basically cover all kinds of a, a, a structure design. So when we write this code, we like to separate the combinational logic from the sequential uh, flip-flop instantiation. And remember this structure and that when we write the C code, we will follow very similar like this kind of a structure. Okay, you have a combinational logic and you have a sequential uh, memory uh, flip-flop instantiation. Another aspect of the structural design is uh, blocking and non-blocking. Okay, and that we introduced uh, before. Okay. Okay, uh, here uh, I briefly highlight the difference between the software and hardware, okay? So why is it really difficult that uh, we want to write the C code and and hope the hardware generated from the C code will match the software behavior. However, uh, the RTL code is actually the hardware. Okay, the hardware, how do we write the C code in such way that the C code, when you do the C, running the C program, the result will match the, the hardware behavior. So it's quite difficult it's here. And First, let's look at the difference. First, in software, a statement is evaluated once in a sequential manner. Okay, SQ the C code uh, in a sequential manner. However, in the hardware, it's event driven. Okay, and in the hardware, it will re evaluate. Okay, and in C code, it won't re evaluate. Once it executes, then it won't come back to SQ the code again. Okay. Okay, that's the one big difference. Another big difference is uh, C code is uh, evaluated in a blocking manner. Okay, so the, the previous statement has to complete and be effective before the next statement can be executed. But however, in hardware is uh, non-blocking. That means uh, uh, it's a run, uh, running concurrently, okay? And in the software C program, in the software C program, the function call is not equal to a module instantiation. Okay, the function call will share the same uh, local memory. Okay, unless you create a uh, different function. Okay, however, in hardware, you call the function, it actually instantiate the module, create a resource for that the function. Okay, 
and C does not. So if you want to use the C code to write, uh, to create a function, and each function is a module, then you have to use a class object use, using the C++. So that's why in uh, HLS, uh, we encourage people using C++, because uh, C++ provides some uh, semantics that can uh, be similar to the hardware. That's the one example. Okay. So uh, when composing multiple module, we want to use a template class to replace function. Okay. The last statement uh, is not clear here. Uh, in the later uh, slide, you, you will understand this statement. So I skip this. So in here, I want to uh, take an example code here. It's a, actually it's a switch. It's a switch. It's a from two port, two input port, L1, L2, to the two output port odd and even. Okay. And this switch here has a pipeline stage, stage one and stage two. Okay. For stage one, it does the decoding based on the uh, list B, B0. If B0 is zero, then uh, it will, uh, the input packet will steer into, I think it's uh, to even. If the B0 is one, then it's steer to the other pole. Okay. So the decode and allocation are combinational logic. L1, L2, that's a local storage. Okay. Then later on, we will look at the, the C code. The C code is a written and way uh, very similar from the uh, Verilog structure statement. You, you separate the combinational logic and the uh, sequential element. Okay. So that's uh, basically uh, is a decoding module. Okay, based on the B0 to decide whether uh, it's uh, other even call. And that's the request, that's the structure uh, defined indicate uh, the port and destination, output port, uh, the decoding result. And for allocation, it actually does the arbitration because the uh, L1, L2 port may both steer to art port. Okay, so you need to do the arbitra uh, arbitration. So that's the uh, arbitration, and then you will grant the port, output port to, uh, to the input port. Okay. And here the code shows the uh, arbitrary uh, I1, I2, and I1 pole uh, has a higher priority. Okay, yeah. In here, that's uh, the switch. Remember, uh, we have a, a pipeline stage, stage one and stage two. And stage one, okay, so basically you have a two L1, L2, and there's a FIFO uh, data comes in, I1, I2 comes in. And that's so the packet comes in, you will latch into the L1, L2. So, so the L1, L2 is a, a sequential flip flop. And then when it comes in, you do the decode, okay? And then you do the uh, uh, allocate. Allocate is arbitration. When allocate, then you goes to the output port, up or even. Okay. So so this is the basic structure. Okay. You have idea uh, for the uh, switch circuit. You will design this way. So you will describe this is stage one, and this is stage two. Okay. So for stage one. Uh, you will depend on the previous stage to arbitration result because the arbitration result knows which port, input port will be released to the output port. So the input port L1 latch will be free. Okay, so you will look at the grant, the allocation result. Then you will, uh, if it's a flush, then the L1 port will be uh, false. That means uh, the, the data content is no longer valid because it has moved to the output port. So the L1 port will be uh, available for, for the input. 
Okay, so it actually look at, okay, here, it actually look at the stage two result. Okay, and then uh, it does the decode based on the input and the decode. Okay, and for stage two, it will assign to the output port. Yeah. Okay, you, you do the arbitration, decide which port you allocate to, output port you allocate, and then assign the value from the uh, input buffers, and then assign to the output, okay. And in this example, uh, the top function, look at here, it actually evaluate stage two first, and then stage one. Okay, that's the why I want to emphasize here, okay. For the structural design pipeline stage, you want to, in, when you write the C code, you want to evaluate the downstream stage first. No, the, the, from the uh, downstream uh, stage first. Okay. And then, uh, and the, uh, the going backward to the uh, upstream stage. Okay. So that's uh, how you write uh, the uh, structural uh, pipeline stage, yeah. Otherwise, uh, 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 because uh, at the stage two, you will use uh, the old value, old value of uh, stage one. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you write the uh, stage one, then stage two will use the new value of the so you want to uh, evaluate backward. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so in this case, uh, wait. Yeah. So let's see uh, these uh, mini machines that uh, the code is showing here. And look at here. You also. Uh, Evaluate these two. The, the sequence of uh, you writing the C code is important. Okay, so you want to write this uh, uh, output. Okay, that's uh, the the second stage because uh, there's a pipeline here. Okay, you uh, want to evaluate this first. So I one times L L is from the uh, latch, and then you assign the the latch value. Okay. So when you compose multiple modules together, in this case, that's a simple uh, forward path. It's a simple forward path. In this case, uh, then you evaluate uh, from left to right, uh, follow the, the data flow, because uh, there's a data dependency here. Okay, so you have to follow uh, the original data dependency order. Okay, so so this one, uh, you take the I and then generate the temp here. And when you evaluate the second one, and you take the temp value, yeah, and produce the output. Okay. So things that get complicated is uh, when you have a feedback path here. Okay. So you can no longer uh, evaluate uh, based on the previous one, yeah. So based on the previous, uh, we evaluate this order, then the temp two, you, you haven't get the, the temp two value yet. Yeah, because temp two follow this uh, order. That's a combination of logic here, okay? So once the I change, then you should get the updated uh, temp two. Well, temp2 is only evaluated in the second uh, function call. Okay. So in this case, uh, it won't work. The, the C code and the actual hardware result won't be matched. So how do you do that? Okay. 
So in here, then we need to separate this module definition into query stage and the update stage. This uh, structure is very much like uh, what I said that the query is a combination of logic. And this uh, update is uh, sequential. Okay, you separate two and you evaluate them separately. Okay, so on, on this one, then you, for the uh, query behavior, you follow the data dependency relationship. Okay, in here, the data dependency is going this way. So you evaluate the full one. Okay, you evaluate this one first. Okay, and then that's full one, that's full two. Okay, and then you evaluate full two. Okay, and get the output. And for the update stage, stay update stage, okay? Then uh, then you evaluate full one and full two. Okay, so for the uh, feedback path, you need to uh, write your class the function class into two methods. One is the query, one is the update. Okay, and the order of a query and update, uh, the rule is defined in here. Evaluation order. Okay. So that uh, we just talk about the uh, simple forward path. You go from uh, uh, downstream uh, to pipeline, okay. We go downstream to upstream. And with the pipeline with the feedback, okay, then for the query method, you follow the data dependency order. Okay. And for the update uh, method, the update must be the last invoke. Okay. You have the uh, all the query method uh, has been called, and then you call uh, the update. And for the update one, you have to make sure uh, all the query method for the update there are certain uh, there are member functions, okay, the member variables, and all the input uh, all the the input that the member member variable depends on. It's a, a it's a query method has to has been evaluated first. Then you can evaluate the update method. Yeah. Okay. So that's the the rule. And however, uh, you can imagine uh, for really the combinational feedback loop, there is no way using the SQL. For example, you have a uh, at, and you have a N and you have a O, O function, and then you have a NOT function, then you have a feedback pass, then O combinational. So for the combinational feedback pass, there's no way you can model this behavior. And actually this, Design is forbidden. Oh, it's not, uh, you're supposed not to design uh, a circuit with a combinational feedback pattern. That's a, that's a very uh, year post uh, design. It's, it's no good. Yeah. And again, uh, for this uh, older discipline, it doesn't apply to all the cases. Yeah. Yeah. The job is in here just uh, provide a method. If we want to design a, a, a structural design with a feedback path. Yeah. And for some cases, you can apply this uh, uh, methodology. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So that's uh, the, the structural design. Yeah. Okay, so basically there are two rules. Is uh, if a pipeline stage, then you evaluate from downstream to upstream. The code, when you write the code, okay, from downstream to upstream. Okay, 
And for the module, it's a fee forward, then it's okay that uh, you follow the data dependency uh, going downstream. Yeah. And if uh, there's a feedback path, then you have to, uh, for that function, you have to separate into the query method and the update method. It's just like uh, when you write the code, you separate the combination logic and the sequential logic. And then uh, you evaluate the combination logic first. That's the query method. And then uh, you evaluate the uh, update method. And when you evaluate the update method, you have to make sure all the uh, member variables, uh, the, the variable, the member function is depends on, has been evaluated first. Yeah. So that's the... Uh, basic ordering discipline. 